some people just confuse me they spend a minimum time on studies and most of the time involved in some other activities yet seem to get grades higher than those who are studying 10 to 12 hours a day i was like what as an average student i also wondered whether it's possible or not but over the years of applying the scientific methods of learning foster and time management after looking at myself i did it i got 8.69 cgp at iit madras published international conference paper cracked ielts in five days with a band of 7.0 means i'm now even eligible to join harvard mit or yale grow my youtube channel to 70k plus subscribers with 20 plus million views founded state driven academy attending basketball sessions and won some of the best player awards all without sacrificing sleep so here are five scientific hacks that will help you do the same by the way if you need here my name is raghuram chandrakumar i'm a master student at id madras let's go step one sharpen the sharp the first problem that i just faced was i don't know how to do it and i'm not capable of doing it as abraham lincoln once said Give me seven hours to chop down a tree and I will spend first five hours sharpening the axe. Let me explain. Imagine you downloaded the Cricket 24 World Cup game and you wanted to make a team for India to win the World Cup. Who will you pick? Will you pick my friend Ramesh, Suresh or you will pick Virat Rohit? Obviously, we all will pick Rohit and Virat because they have the skills of winning and they are fit enough to implement these skills. This is why you should sharpen your shot. Means, first learn the meta skill behind learning faster. And that's what we are going to share in this video. But sharpen the saw doesn't end by knowing how to do. It also tells you to make yourself worthy of achieving it. Like Virat, he is so strong. So how to make your brain capable of doing? First thing, good sleep. How? Research done by Matt Walker, professor of neuroscience and psychology at the University of California, Berkeley, underscores the importance of sleep and one's learning. Sleep group and a sleep deprivation group. Now, the sleep group, they're going to get a full eight hours of slumber. And when you put those two groups head to head, what you find is a quite significant 40 percent deficit in the ability of the brain to make new memories without sleep. So have at least seven to eight hours of sleep. Most of the worst case, have at least six hours of sleep. Second thing, exercise. In one line, physical exercise turns your brain on. In his book, Spark, The Revolutionary New Science of Exercise and the Brain, John J. Radley writes that exercise is the single most powerful tool you have to do to optimize your brain function. So do exercise at least 25 minutes a day. It is worth your time. Step 2. Identify your BP. Despite me sleeping 6 to 8 hours a day and working out every day, the energy levels of my day fluctuate like this. And the best part is, it repeats the same every day. If you observe your own ebbs and flow, there will be a clear pattern where you can find where in a day you are biologically more active. As Chris Bailey mentions, when you take the time to observe how your energy fluctuates over the course of the day, you can work on your highest impact task during your BPT. BPT means biological prime time, the time where you can bring the most energy and focus to them. Because productivity is not simply about managing time, it is also managing your attention and energy. To do with that information, this brings us to the idea of the step two. Know your biological active time and schedule your study sessions around that time. Below, I'm attaching an energy sheet where you can note down your energy levels for the next seven days and know your BPT. Now, we literally identified how to become a super sign while studying. Now, let's go for a hunt. Step 3. Hunt at the right place. How many of you watched this cartoon show, Dragon Ball Z? There is a favorite character called Goku. Whenever he wants to fight a villain, he always finds a way to drag a villain to a place where there is no civilians are there. The same we need to apply. Let me explain. In 1971, during the Vietnam War, Robert Steele from Kuntkut and Morgan Murphy from Illinois found that nearly 15% of American soldiers and 35% service members were addicted to heroin. But when Americans came back to US, only 5% stay addicted. That means overnight, 9 out of 10 quits their heroin addiction. At that time, heroin addiction was considered as incurable. So how does this happen? They didn't change, but their surroundings changed. In Vietnam, they were surrounded by easy to get heroin, made friends with who uses heroin, and they were also heavily stressed during the war. Bad environment. But when they came back to the US, there were no more reasons to use heroin. That's the power of environment. In 1936, psychological Kurt Levin wrote a simple equation that makes a powerful statement. Behavior is a function of the person in the environment. So what I'm trying to say, 
whenever you are studying make sure you study in a place where it encourages you to study like when i go to library i see people studying hard so when i found procrastinating i feel kind of a you know guilty of it and whenever i work in room my room is surrounded by books camera equipment all these things are for my career so always study in the right environment hey friends a quick announcement if you are someone who is preparing for jwd pw is providing best quality courses for your jwd preparation and the best part is the courses are affordable and they have one of the best educators for physics chemistry and math here is a glimpse of it arjuna jwd 4.0 for 11th class is a 2800 rupees jwd ultimate crash course for 12th standard and dropper is a 2500 rupees here is some additional details classes will be 6 days a week and 3 live lectures per day daily practice problem with their video solution in quiz format pdf notes of each class will be uploaded on pw app scheduled test will be held according to the planner and for the jw ultimate crash course the course will be completed in three parts firstly most important concepts secondly most important problem thirdly mission iit advanced the first two parts will be completed within 7th of january after that maa will complete till advanced exam you can use my code ragu500 for 500 rupees off on the above course step number 4 learn effectively if you read popular books on the science behind learning faster or watch popular videos on this topic one of the idea everyone shares is intention to learning was useful only if it is leads to right learning strategies there is no use of playing violin at the back of a buffalo not putting efforts to understand the concept was highly ineffective highlighting rereading while revising are all highly ineffective so how to study effectively here are three study hacks to learn faster and effective study hack 1 understand any successful person apj abdul kalam pragnananda bill gates one common thing with them is they are successful and they are master in their own field and you take any competitive exam there are problems that requires creative thinking so to gain mastery and to solve complex problems the first and most important step is understanding understanding is the key to the kingdom and no 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 memorization without understanding no 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 imagine you are studying a concept and if you simply memorizing the raw information that you are grasping in will simply make a vague impression like this but in your brain if you understand it you have a clear picture and accurate knowledge of the subject so always make sure whatever you have learned is understood well and the best way to make sure understanding is good is teach what you learn because feynman once said you should not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool so the best way to check out whether you understood or not is teach what you learn study hack 2 practice understanding is actually not enough this is why many gate aspirants who have gone studied all the concepts in all the subjects still when they write the exam they fail now what to do now when you understand a concept the brain has memory traces something like this it is not stronger to make a stronger memory trace one has to practice a lot of problems you can see this picture on the left which shows the memory traces before practicing and this picture on the right shows the memory traces after you have practiced in simple words the more you practice the firmer the darker and stronger your mental patterns become study hack 3 revise actively there is a study done by jeffrey d carpigi professor of psychological sciences pod university and his colleagues where they find that many students when they revising a subject they simply just open the book and reread and they feel oh yeah i got this this is actually called illusions of competence you think you know it but actually you are not the way information gets stronger in brain is when you put the effort to take the information out of it rather than putting the information in so whenever you are revising a subject never ever open the book and start reading it instead before opening the chapter recollect all the information as much as you can and then look at the book and fill in the gaps this is also why giving test is actually powerful Barbara Oakley puts it best. If you compare yourself how much you learn by spending one hour studying versus one hour taking a test on the same material, you will retain and learn far more result of the hour you spend taking a test. Testing is a powerful way of concentrating mind. Go give tests. Now you might think Raghu this will take a lot of time. No, here's the proof. Research published in the journal Science provide solid evidence along these lines. Students studied a scientific test and then practiced it with recalling as much of the information they could and they restudied the subject using active recalling the results in the same amount of time by simply practicing and recalling the material students learned far more than at a deeper level than they did using any approach like rereading concept mapping and everything study hack 4 use memory techniques to reduce your study time whether you are preparing for jw or you are preparing for college exam it is inevitable that we need to memorize certain things not only it helps us to remember formulas certain days memory techniques helps us 
just remember a concept better. So here are three memory hacks to accelerate your learning. Memory hack one, mnemonic. Mnemonics are simply shortcuts that we do to remember stuff. For example, my very educated mother just served us noodle. Which helps us remember the order of the planets in our solar system, right? I I know what you're thinking. It works because research shows us that recalling information is easier when you connect it with other pieces of information. The example I mentioned is connecting the information with a weird statement. And one more way of using mnemonics is using shortcuts. Example: Vibgia, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Kiss, which means keep it short and simple. Or you can also use coin saying or facts to connect the relevant concepts that you are studying. For example, in 2011, under MSD captainship, India won World Cup. You can frame some stories like in 2011. and i went there i just saw the book einstein and from the something like that you got the idea right you can make a story and you can relate with it memory hack to use memorable visual images i repeat memorable visual image our brain is very good at remembering images than words how to use it attach the piece of information you want to remember with a memorable visual image on simple right for example take newton's second law f is equal to ma now imagine flying monkey in air got it right f is equal to ma flying monkey in air that's how to remember it memory hack 3 spaced repetition the most powerful memory hack out of all before that the spaced repetition is the most important memory hack out of all before that let's know our brain a little bit we have two types of memory one is working memory and the other one is long term memory let's say you are listening to class you might remember some of the things professor is saying but after the class we forget most of the things that's because the information was in working memory that is kind of a temporary the other one is long term memory as the name suggests it will be in your memory longer than usual or maybe lifetime remember it like library in your brain which where your information will be stored and you can be retrieve it whenever you want now to take the information from the short term memory to long term memory two things has to happen first the idea has to be memorable then it has to be repeated german psychologist hermann epping bs from 1880 to 1885 did a really weird experiment he memorized a set of non meaningful words and he plotted those results in a graph and he discovered the forgetting curve there's a guy who did weird experiment <laughs> that helps us to remember more anyway in this graph the vertical axis represents how well you remember something and the horizontal axis represents time right after running you are at the peak of the graph but as the time goes on your memory of the information fades away but if you want to retain the same level of memory you need to actively recollect then you will be 100% remembering the thing but what happens here is Once after you have done the first recall the next time the information dies slowly then after some time if you reverse you will get 100 percentage again if you keep repeating this again soon enough the information will be memorable and will be lifetime so space your studies and revise in intervals of time before moving on to the final step which will drastically reduce your time and increase your accomplishments let me share you a bonus step small breaks between sessions now this is really effective because research after research shows that studying for longer hours is actually ineffective so instead of sitting 6 hours straight take frequent breaks in between apart from effectiveness point of view it is also difficult to focus because average human brain can focus harder up to 25 minutes this is why there is a popular technique also called pomodoro where you set the timer for 25 minutes and take a 5 minutes break and some of us like me who will take like work for some 45 minutes they will take 15 minutes break mm, it's kind of up to you but take breaks that's very important and most importantly don't use phone because you will get distracted instead chill out or do some chores and if you are finding yourself trouble in getting back to study then use 30 seconds rule means just force yourself to sit and open the book because most of the time if we change the inertia then we'll most likely sit and study step 5 use these two productivity hacks hack number 1 focus on high return tasks have you ever heard of wilfred pareto and his observation in his garden let me explain one day while gardening wilfred pareto found that 20% of the pea plants in his garden produce 80% of peas then he thought it is coincidence the next day he observed the same pattern he was like no answer at all but wilfred pareto is not just a gardener he is a italian polymath i actually don't know what is a polymath and an economist so he went on discovering the wealth of italy again he found the same pattern what did he find 80% of the wealth of the nation generated by 20% of the population and it is everywhere even microsoft reports 80% of the errors crashes in windows and office are caused by 20% of the entire pool of bugs so find the task which gives more return 
I still remember that one of the subjects which I secured A. When I interact with the seniors who have done it before, they mention me, professor of that particular subject will focus on assignments and in NSM also the question will come from the assignment. And guess what happened? That just happened. For the entire course of the semester, I, I simply spent 4 to 5 hours a week for assignments and in the final exam, I studied the assignment questions and I got an A. Even in gate exam, if you know all the concepts, how to insert the value in the formula and get the answer, then you are most likely to qualify. That means you are 90% above of the gate aspirants over writing. Hack 2. Set deadlines. Work expands to fill the time available for its completion. Have you ever heard this? Let me explain. Have you ever observed this? If your teacher gives 7 days to prepare for an exam, we finish most often our preparation on our 7th day? You know, I do that. If the same teacher gives 1 day to prepare for an exam, we finish the preparation on the second day because deadline prioritizes what's important, wastes less time and increases our focus. You might argue me, Raghu, this is stressful being under a timer. But researchers have found something really fascinating and counterintuitive. If you learn under mild stress, you can handle greater stress much more easily. Saint Belloc, the author of Choke, mentions that golfers who practice putting in front of others haven't choked when they perform in front of audience in competition. Time after time, top performers in field from sports to medicine have practiced under high pressure situations.